for both of these teams. But the road starts now, and it really comes down to how do we get this map veto rolling? Can Sharks answer back on Anubis, or does Red Can Red Cannon just run away for a fourth time in a row? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, the thing was too is you know what we talked about a little bit for anybody that wasn't here for the first matches. I mean, for Red Cannon's Hards Out was the person that was you know pulling up some magnificent stats. I mean, we were talking the lowest amount of rating he had was a one point three. I mean, there was a point where he was pushing the high ones, right? So like he was almost pushing like a two point oh rating, which is kind of insane when you think about it. But yeah, it looks like we're getting close to getting things done here. But again, I, I kind of want to see what we can find a little bit more from Nython. He was able to come alive a lot more with that op in the later portion of the previous best of three that we had. And now we're going to have to see if, you know, this game, you know, despite it being a loss, if they can put this into more effect to keep themselves alive in this close qualifier. Because like we said, this is a double elimination bracket, but whoever loses this, they're done and they're going home. Exactly right, Laz. I mean, um, the, the big thing here is I'm looking at Venom Zera, especially here on a map like Anubis. He had an absolutely Herculean performance against Nine and There's a huge reason why there was any sort of competition between the two teams in the first place. Huge A defense were on the CP side, and then those A lurks when he switched over to the offense were also super, super impactful. So I'm looking towards him to have that same level of impact. And as you said, Nithon was critical in 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 the clutch for them on that t side he had a huge 1v3 that was really the only reason why they were able to eventually win the game all off that t side is he kept them alive i mean he was insane and the thing is is sure he's got the awp sure there's a lot of impact on the back of him but he is the igl at the end of the day so i'm more looking towards him to have those kinds of impactful rounds here and there and let your rifle core do the rest because I th i'm looking to them those younger players to kind of step up when it counts. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, the other player that kind of stuck out for me a bit more, especially when we were getting into map three, was Venom Zera. I mean, he, I think he was starting things off. He was like eight and two at one point. So you were kind of wondering what was going on and a couple of little blips that cost him some rounds, but it wasn't really, I would say his fault or anything. It was just, you know, kind of the roll of the dice, unfortunately. But I do agree with you. I think we want to see a little bit more of the roster. I think we got to see that in the later portion of that previous best of three, but now people are warmed up. They both have been able to play best of threes. They played some pretty hard opponents. So we're going to have to see how well they can put that into effect against each other. Because, I mean, the history books are there. That Sharks have a lot of work cut out for them here. But it's been some time. That's a roster that's been together for, I think, about a year for the most part. Whereas I know right now for this other team, they, you know, had that replacement with Hardzow. And he, you know, was a long standing member of Payne. So that was kind of the other big thing we were wondering to see, like, how well he can mesh into this team. And, to be honest, I've been impressed. I don't think there was really much that you know showed me he was still struggling to find his path and you know his impact that he can bring to the server. Yeah, I think I think as far as sharks are concerned, um, I'm looking towards whether or not this experience can get them over the line because this roster has been together for a long, long time. I mean, the coach of the sharks roster has been on the on this team for six years, six years plus, six and a half years total, which is absolutely insane to me that you would have that long of a time with, with one coach. Um, and his name is Kochi, so, you know, yeah, uh, that, that's pretty interesting. Uh, you look towards the rest of the roster, DRG has been on this team for almost two years. Togs has been on this team for nearly a year and four months. Uh, and, and their newest player has been on the team for six months. So, I mean, this team has been together for quite a bit. And the expectation for them is that, can that experience net them a win? And and can these repeated losses against Red Cannons, have they learned from something from it, even just beyond this, this base surface level of them picking a different map? Do they have the adaptations in place? Do they have the resiliency to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Red Cannons? Because my expectation here is that we have a quick sweep and Red Cannons continue through with this bracket unless I get proven otherwise. Yeah, well, I think that's going to be the big question for us, right? I think I think the big thing for me is like how much have Sharks been able to, you know, bounce back from the previous best of three. They only had about an hour to kind of get themselves, you know, refreshed a bit more composed here because Red Cannons, they, you know, in the second qualifier to get their spot here in the closed, they were able to have a pretty dominant performance. I mean, they were taking down teams like 13-1, I think, you know, there was a 13A in the slip of that. And then, like I said, they even proved their worth even more taking down Legacy because in my book, like I was kind of looking at Legacy as that team that probably should have made it here too. They were definitely a contender for this conversation, but they were able to prevail that and take it with a 2-1 that went, you know, two maps to the full distance. So these guys have definitely been, you know, been tested here before. 
But I think for Sharks, when they were in the qualifier, all their games were really close. So it wasn't like they had dominant wins. They weren't able to sweep any teams or anything like that. So it makes me wonder how prepared they're going to be for this matchup. That's definitely true. I mean, we, uh, those of you at home, we are having a little bit of technical difficulties as uh, we're just trying to sort that out before we hop back in a game. Uh, and you know, we definitely want to make sure that everything's tip top shape for you guys. But yeah, I mean, I think I think Sharks look like the team that do need to prove to us why they're here, right? Sure, they had that that open qualifier run that that makes sense on paper. They beat some good teams to get here. Uh, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day. They're still looking for that extra gear to to be considered as a top team in South America, and they've got a lot to a lot to prove. You know, in terms of the, the actual lands that they've qualified for, they haven't been able actually able to to get back to uh, another land ever since they qualified for. I believe one of the RMRs. They might that might have been at one of the RMRs here or there, but second place at the showdown qualifier, second place in the Yon Shipping Close qualifier, and. I mean, they, they were second place in the uh, open qualifiers for Atlanta as well. So they've always been very close to making that big leap, but they're always just short of that line. And so I'm looking towards them to see if they have that extra gear to get it over the line. Yeah. And I hope for everyone's sake that they can, you know? Yeah, well, exactly. And that's and that's just it, right? I mean, this is a moment here for Sharks to kind of make a big story and, and a big name for themselves. And like we said, I mean, this is still in the lower bracket. So it still means that the winner of this will fight another time in that lower bracket. And then again, would go to the grand final. So that's where things are going to be in more effect. But this is it for the moment. It does look like there was a bit of tech issues. So the pistol round has commenced, which does allow Sharks to take that first initial lead. So now... This is going to put a good money situation here for the T side. So we'll have to see what the Sharks can do for us. Yo, Sharks looking to build on that pistol victory. Uh, as Red Cannons do take that, that full save. They had a, a little bit of trouble on, on the CT side against 9Z. But when they, when they really did step up, they, they were able to defend against that those A attacks very well. Credit to Venom Zera. Very curious to see what Sharks have in store for us, what their conditioning looks like, whether we'll actually get to see more B hits this time around. I hope so. <laughs> Could be nice. And that looks like it's going to be the tail of the tape right now. And these CT pistols are actually going to swing what? through B main. So they're actually going to be able to make a bit of good exchanges here, all things considered. But now some good reply coming back from the AKs. And it's just down to a P250. And the USP now to see what they can find. It's... The advantage right now for the T's, but in terms of the smokes, they're still blocking things out. Lots of time left on the clock. The bomb's not going to make its advantage yet. Already is going to be able to find the one, find the two, and that's going to be a good money grabber here too. The MAC-10 going to get the job done, but it is a little costly considering, you know, there wasn't too much investment here for Red Candidates. Yeah, well, they will force a couple rebuys, and that's always nice for Red Candidates. You won't have the knife on AWP out straight away, but the guns do follow. And round three is to set the tone of this best of three. A lot on the shoulders of Sharks to get the ball rolling in this best of three. Mirage will be a tough test and so will Ancient. We've always had that mountain to climb when it comes to the vetoes. But maybe they have an edge here picking into Anubis. And maybe that swings this best of three advantage into a completely different scenario altogether. Yeah, a lot more slow of a round. Again, just getting the pace on this. Red Cannons, again, they have to be really careful on how much utility they want to use because, again, they only still have the double smoke and single flashes right now for the team members. So they want to preserve that. Harzow does have the one smoke that is going to be towards B as well as Venom Zera just kind of sitting in the back of A just on heaven. So waiting things out. Flash is coming in for the A main control, but Young Sharks are taking a bit more time on this. They're a bit hesitant on it. We saw before the A site was the name of the game. We'll see if that's going to be still in effect, but Hardstyle comes up big to start things off, getting that first initial duel in favor for the CT side. And now Young Sharks, they might be swimming to a new destination. That might be the port of call here. They've gotten a lot of A main control, and RDN has made quite a ways out into Fountain to get one of his own. Oh, now no. David actually shaking hands with another, with Gafolo inside that smoke, and Gafolo takes it. And with that, the round as well. Togs gets another to, to add on to that. And Sharks are straight through. I mean, 
not many bullets used, not much utility used. It's just straight headshots were sharks and red cannons roll over. Yeah, and I think that, again, the big thing that was a the key situation for me was RDN. I think the fact that he was able to push through that smoke, get into that water like that, and just post up on the player on top, he was able to win that fight. And like you said, there was two players, you know, on the opposite side, just below them, like holding hands in the smoke, and they didn't know they were there. But uh, that's kind of what opened it up. And then it just was another one-two punch, and they got it done. So Young Sharks uh, have done a great job now to put themselves at a 3-0, to zero, and this M4 is getting hunted not really fast, but I mean, it is treading on a, a couple scary waters, but he should be fine now. But I mean, the money's not going to be great to compliment. I mean, they all are sitting around that, you know, high 2000s, low threes. So they could force up some pistols here, Paladin, but do they really want to try that? I think a half buy probably makes the most sense here, especially considering they've hit that max loss bonus. And Destiny will just opt in to hold on that A1S, maybe put him a little bit more aggressive here. And we've seen the amount of potency that red cannons have had with the pistols on a map like Anubis. And I have that expectation that they could pull out some heroics here, but really look towards Destiny to potentially get involved early. Trying to fight into E-Box will be pushing ahead of that E-Box smoke. So already a little bit of an opportunity for him to get involved, but he is spotted. He has to back out. And it's now down to those pistols to potentially open things up here for red cannons. Yeah, and the Sharks, I mean, you know, we talked a little bit about this, but again, they have a six-map streak on this, right? So they haven't, you know, really tasted a defeat on this map alone yet. Whereas, again, on the other side of things for Red Candids, I mean, they were the ones that, you know, they lost to Pain, but then now they've been able to have two matches in a row. This one earlier today is kind of adding to that belt. So, again, for Sharks, like, on paper, this is a good map for them. So that's why they've been able to show us this decent lead with the 3-0. Bomb is going to go down, and CT's tuck and tail because they're going to want to try to save these rifles as, as much as possible. But Young Sharks, they're going to know this, so they should be going for the hunt. And I, I don't think this would be careless. I think this is the right play to do, because if they can remove it, man, this could be more of an issue. Quite an economy built up for Sharks, so yeah, I, I definitely don't mind it. Doc is here to potentially take away one of the rifles. Destiny nearly had the spot. Now he definitely sees it, but the spray is awry. Doc gets him. And it'll only be hard out trying to retain this rifle. He's pretty much surrounded here. And it just really depends on how much the chase wants to be given. It's only going to be Doc chasing. Nearly there. Oh. And he has it. That's brutal for hard out. He would have loved to save, save that rifle. But again, no harm, no foul. At the end of the day, max loss bonus is still there. So they'll get all the bell and, bells and whistles that they were requiring. And try to go at it in round number five. But... We really need for CTs to step up here. Nython finally has his weapon of choice. Gafolo decides to opt in for his AWP as well. So, get to see those ops duel quite early out in this half. And I'm sure that that head-to-head -head will be impactful as the, the series moves on. Still seeing a little bit of the opening up the smokes here. Some good information. Just again, just getting some intel. Investigating a little bit. Hard Zhao, holding a nice angle, just trying to see what he can find. Try to find Togs, not able to get it, but now he knows at least one person's close on by. Sharks now making their way through the bridge. Now they're going to cross through. They've gotten a lot of real estate here. They've been able to get so much map control. David Davis has kind of just given this up. I mean, he is just playing a very passive angle, so they have that intel that they know it could be a possibility. As soon as this U-tail gets thrown, the jig's going to be up. And even Sharks, they don't even look like they want to commit to it, so they're just trying to fake him out. Love that Molotov to at least dissuade Sharks from pushing on in through mid. They've got a couple players perched out in this. Venom Zera gets a spot, lovely shoulder bait, but Gafolo misses the second shot, and that could be to a demise. Double swing to get the trade, and sure, Venom Zera goes down, so now the pressure comes in onto Nikon. Now that the A anchor oh, is down for no. the count, a big miss from Nikon. And now he's got to go bigger, and yet again, Nithon cannot confirm anything. DRG is there to punish Doc as well on the other side of the map. Sure, Hard Zhao is there for the trade, but it's only Davideus that could step up here in round number five. And he gets nothing. Yeah, nothing at all. Sharks are just... They're just looking so fierce right now. Going to make this a 5-0. And really, I mean, this round was just chaotic in the sense of the ops, right? I mean, both sides, they weren't able to make those connections. Gopolo was able to get that one before getting double swung. But 
missing, you know, two initial shots. Same thing that we see here from Nython, which is just really unfortunate. And I mean, that's the thing, like if, if that op misses, it just creates so much space that you can take advantage of it. And that's what we got to see from the sharks right now. And still on the hunt, Hard Zhao does spot the barrel. Oh no, Hard Zhao. Okay, he gets it fine. That's all good. Nothing to sweat too much about. But now the sharks making their way to this. RDN trying to see if he can maybe find him. This could be terrible for Hard Zhao if he gets taken out. He needs to stay alive. Okay, beautiful tap. Gun's going to be retrieved, and that's fine, but a 5-0, and I would expect to see a timeout sometime soon. I think at this point in time, it would be it'd be fine to call attack here. Could wait for the following as well, but they're just going to half here. Involve hards out, involve Davideus as much as possible, but we need a big individual play to potentially pull red cannons out into this game, because right now, it's all sharks all day. They can't really do, and no, no individuals giving them any room to breathe. They're not able to save these weapons. They're not able to get any pieces of map control early. And Venom Zera, the player that I was touting in the series previous, has really struggled on this A side of the map. Yeah, we're definitely seeing a, a very different CT side right now from Red Cadence. It's not looking convincing like we saw before. And, and I mean, this kind of around, I mean. They do have that M4 with the AK, but I feel like if this round doesn't go their way, we must be seeing that timeout. And they got to just cool things off here. The Sharks, you know, they got some blood in the water and, and they've just been hunting and they've been doing such a great job to get control of this game. And if they find that six, I mean, like we said, it's bare minimum. Destiny, destiny. Okay, I almost get it. That's fine. Gonna get rewarded with an AK. So now, Red Cannons, you get themselves three rifles. That makes life much better for the Red Cannons. And now, questions for Sharks. We want to tilt back over the B site. Yeah, they do. And I'd love the flashbang to potentially prime in hards out, but he gets nothing. Nearly gets rid of Togs, but DRG is there to, to back him up. And now it's only Destiny left on the site, trying to stall for as long as possible as the cavalry arrives. But here comes the split. Destiny gets his first, and that's all she wrote. Yeah, there's but, still the M4 here, though. Yeah, that's the main thing. David Ace's A1S is still involved. And there's Nithon. It's actually the A1S. It's not like the P250 to get involved. And there's David on the A1S. And now it's DRG in the clutch. Yeah, and this is still a decent position. Despite the lack of utility, there's one. Make it two. And making it out of the clutch. Now this is just about burning the clock as much as possible. There's no kit. But Venom Zera holding a nice angle. And there we go. We're going to finally see a round going in favor right now for the Red Candidates. And they're starting to get themselves back into uh, a little bit of contention here, Paladin. My goodness, that round was nearly lost by just a very foolhardy decision to potentially go and grab a gun in B main without having cleared E-Box entirely. And that free kill nearly allowed for, uh, for, for DRG to get the clutch there. And... Sadly, he, he couldn't get enough HP off of that second duel, and Venom Zera picks up a rifle, shuts things down, and Red Cannon stay alive. But nearly a head and hands moment there for the CTs. They get a lifeline, and now they've got to find a way to build on it. Well, the op's going to be back out. Nithon's got this ready to go. The full oil as well going to be equipped with this. Leading in terms of the frag department right now for the Sharks. The full is sitting pretty nice right now with a 7 3. DRG close on by with that six and two and and Nithon, unfortunately, this is you know the first map that we saw in the previous series where it wasn't the, the quickest start, but he did start to get a little bit more warmed up. And let's not forget that I mean they did lose their first map five to seven when they were on the CT side. So I feel like if we can still be in that same kind of score line potentially, maybe a little better, they can put things over to that T side because that was the money maker. Yeah, at the end of the day, Nubus is a very T-sided map, or sorry, T-sided map, and it is very hard to, to get some momentum rolling, so any rounds that they could scrounge together would be wonderful. At this point, it's a question of how are they going to get those rounds, as Young Sharks, again, want to try to take that A contour, and it looks like the South Americans really just like this half of the map, Ooh. but Venom Zero likes it just a little bit better. What a tap on RDN. Understands that there's more coming his way, and he's got to have his wits about him. 
Yeah, brisk headshot. And now DRG actually does flip away on this, but now the CTs are just loading up the kill feed right now, leaving it just down to two. A four on two now, the advantage for Red Cannons, but hang on a second, that's not going to be the case. Now there's only 20 seconds remaining. Ball plant's going to come through. This off is still becoming a problem, leaving it now just down to Hard South. Someone that has been able to do so great in this qualifier, needing to put up the hero pants. And no, 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 it's going to be Sharks now that maintain this lead with six. Ah, oh, that was that wasn't good. That really wasn't good for Red Cannons. I think dry swinging camera there, when you have flashbangs in your hands, is not a good look. At that point in time, you need to have your your T's crossed and your and your eyes dotted because you can't be given Gafolo free kills like that. As soon as he's able to dive back in, DRG has so much room to play with as well. Really tough pill to swallow there for Red Cannons. Their money snapped. And whatever momentum they were given, especially after Venom Zera kept them in it for so long, has just been ripped away. Yeah, this has just been a, a suffocating side right now for the CT sides here for the, the Red Cannons. I mean, they just can't seem to buy around if they try. It's just so hard. I mean, the op's still in the play. Nython needs to be able to find, but that flash is going to push him away. He doesn't really get any information. He knows at least one or two are close on by, but now he's going to have to reposition this op again. And the Sharks still kind of putting a little bit more pressure towards this A, still waiting things out. Burning the clock. No more utility available here for the CTs. And right now for Sharks, they still have plenty that they can use here for execute. They got the double mollies with some smokes. Getting ready to go for this A site. And it's going to be vacated. The only close person is Venom Zero right now. He has that 5-7. But that's all he's got. Not expecting Venom Zero to do, really do anything here. If he could, it'd be a minor miracle. He does get one. And that's a stunning one in his own right. But that's about it. Long range MP9 from David is not going to get the job done. And I'm assuming a save is going to be called here. Or maybe just play for exits because Young Sharks have really made themselves presentable with this T side so far. Yeah, they really have. This is putting them in right now in the conversation for seven. And like you said, the, the save makes a lot of sense. There's so much investment just in terms of Nython. You want to make sure you can keep that op alive. And, I mean, even the MP9 is still a good thing. There's a lot of armor here for these players, so this is not a bad thing. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. It'd be kind of careless for them to try to go for a retake when they don't have anything to flush the players out and get some better repositioning. But, I mean, this is a very different kind of, you know, path that I thought we were going to go. But Sharks have just been, you know, dominating this first half, and, and they guaranteed it with a 7. But it, it begs the question of how much more can they, you know, keep stacking this. I mean, there's just no answers, right? Right now, Red Cannons barred Venom Zera. Nobody's really hitting their shots. I, I mean, hardow has been able to, but it's really on the tail ends of these rounds. I'm looking towards Nython. I'm looking towards David. Maybe try to make some plays happen. So far, it's just been too much respect being given over to the T's. And those mid-round aggressions, it was a huge issue that, that Red Cannons had on Ancient that cost them against 9Z. And now it's coming back to bite them here on the... CT side of Anubis as well. And even for Red Cannons, again, they were the ones that, you know, despite losing their first half against 9Z, I mean, they still made rounds very close. Like, it came down to, you know, those 2v3s or, you know, 2v2 situations. It wasn't like they were just blowout rounds that they lost. I mean, they made every round competitive. So, right now, that's not the same, you know, kind of, kind of story we're seeing. I mean, the op, we'll have to see what Nython's going to be able to find. He is close on by. He's got DRG just on the other side of this. Going to fall back now, though. Bomb's still in the back here of Canal, so just waiting it out. A minute has now been reached. And I love that we're seeing Sharks kind of mix this up, out. And because, you know, what we saw earlier, it just felt like it was just crunch A, crunch A. That's all we're going to do. Now it seems like there's a lot more variety here in the playbook. Just time crunch B is the name of the game. And... Destiny is yet to find anything. Venom's there, still terrified to move up into A. And with that, Red Cannons have three players on the site, have all the right players in the right place. It's just about a question of execution. Can they hold strong? Oh, this flash. 
That was everything. It just allowed a big opening, and now Hardzow is behind the pillar, but he needs to find these multis, and he does. He's down to 17 HP. They know he's there. He just needs to stay alive, making shots. He's able to find a third in that kind of a position, and all of a sudden now, this thing is flopped on its head, and now they're going to get rewarded with big weapons, and that op is still going to be in the rotation, and a job well done here for Red Candids. Well, job well done to Hardzow. I mean, how he gets... Three kills with only one magazine. Mind you, that third kill was off the was off the three bullets left in his magazine. And if he goes down, Nithon missed his shot. And it's only David that can, can really get stuck into the into the duel. So it's gotta be hard out to step up and there's that individual play that we were looking for. And maybe that breeds some some little bit of life into Red Cannon, and maybe it does. Look at Nithon finding that opening 5v4. And now, maybe a little bit of momentum building here for the Brazilians. And that's what they need. I mean, that's that was something they were successful with before, finding these openers. But TRG just wins a big duel like that with a big spray. RDN now does have the glue, and he wins that fight! Despite the Mully being in front of him, he's still able to plow through two more. And it's a four on two now. And the vantage for the Sharks. And now the CTs... I don't even know if they want to go for this at all. There it is. You can see Nithon. He is running as fast as he can. The laces are done up. And Sharks now have found an eighth round Paladin. And that's all just tempo. That's contact plays right there. Wanting to take the duel into tempo. Wanting to take the duel into E-Box. And Sharks just win their aim, aim fights and get themselves their eighth. It's not anything fancy. But in the in the 4v5, Sharks still find a way to pull a rabbit out of the hat. And they are flying through this offensive half. Where is the red cannons that we just saw a couple hours ago? Yeah, and, and you know, I feel there's always that conversation about when you play a BO3 before, it makes you wonder, you know, like, is the gas tank so full? Is, there, is the energy there? You know, are they deflated? And right now we're kind of seeing that. I mean, it looks like they haven't been able to bounce back so far from that earlier matchup. Maybe it was a bit more of a devastating loss than we think, right? We know that it was still in that upper bracket. But, I mean, Sharks have kind of, you know, learned from their previous match and, and they're just trying to take this thing and the wind's just going to move this uh, with the sails. And, that's, and this is a great thing to see because now this could be a conversation about a 10-2 potentially if they find this round. It really does come down to this one. And finally, something different from Venom Zera. He wants to get stuck in the duel instantaneously, but instead takes a nade to the face and has to tuck tail. 61 HP on his name. And the youngster can't get the opening 5v4. So back to passive play for the Red Cannon. And they've just got to figure out how to, how to dig themselves out of this one because right now the Sharks can really move around anywhere they want in the map to their own pleasure. Yeah, and it's been, honestly, the nice mix-up, right? It's not just like the same thing over and over. We're not getting the, the repeat of the same song. So that's what's been great. They've just been having a variety. They change the tempo when they need to. And even now, we're, we're seeing the Red Cannons are trying everything to kind of mix that up as well. Even that attempt from Venom Zera. Just on the outer part, and there's a swing, and oh boy, both those guys were going for a big fight, but it will go in effect here for Red Cannons. They're going to be able to put themselves in the man advantage, but how long? Such a big kill for Davideus to get huge morale boost in the camp now that they have another 5v4 to deal with. More damage on a Togs, and this beast split continues to slip away. 25 seconds left on the clock. Not a lot of utility to speak of. And it's all got to be pinpoint precision here for the Sharks if they want to stand a chance in this one. They've got a Molly for Dark. Now they're just going to have to swing. The Polo gets the trade. The Destiny stands up tall. There's David to get two of his own. And now it's only Togs left up in the 1v2. That's Seven seconds left on the clock. He's got to stick it. And there's Nithon with the swing. No respect there. Red Cannons get a third. And maybe, just maybe, we can scrounge up a half here if Red Cannons can, can pull back a fourth. You know, and that was one of the rounds that we see the the timer going really low and Sharks took a lot of time for that one. And I know you and I were kind of, you know, losing our minds, you know, in the previous series a little bit about that too, because it did not work out for uh, for some teams that I'll leave nameless for this time. But I, I mean, now at least for Red Canada fans, I mean, you can have that sigh of relief because this is the last round of the first half. This could be an opportunity for that, you know, the 8-4, but at least that can bring things back a little bit more in motion to get things transitioned to that second half. 
and there is even a tech nine just for doc right now right so this is not the greatest you know amount of you know weapons that we have here but you can never count out a tech but does have some utility to get some space done maybe there's some legs here for red cannons after all chance now and, i mean they've had a, a couple of chances in this half to build something but have slipped here and there with a couple of mistakes and this time nithon wants to take the fight to the sharks he takes down his counterpart in kafola but drg is there to respond in kind and i'd favor the 4v4 for the g's every day of the week especially now that they've got mid a lot of space now for the sharks to potentially split onto this a bomb site david is here and venom zera is here they've both got to do some serious heavy lifting here if they want to stand a chance for this fourth round yeah, and Venezera gets taken out right away. So now the long A players are just going to, you know, bombard this. They're going to get into the site. There's no more saving. This is it. Red Cannons have to go for the two on three. Destiny, no utility, does have a kit. Same with Ardzal. Going to be creeping through and has actually been able to get some more control than I think that the young sharks are aware of. This is great. This could be a difference maker. This might be able to find that gap. Hardzow has to make some noise. Needs to bait this out. Destiny might be able to slip behind enemy lines here. Is creeping on through. Hardzow still waiting it out. There's Destiny with one. Destiny what? with two. And things could be working out very well for the Red Cannons. It is a nade that dunks onto RDN. He's going to fall. And now this defuse comes in. And it's going to be an 8-4 as Red Cannons are able to get back a little bit of life. We're going to take that short, short break, and we'll see you for the second half. Don't give up on us, don't give up on love. Don't give up on us, don't give up on love. Hold me down, never let me go. Take me in, I want you to show. Hold me down, never let me go. Take Don't give up on us, don't give up on us, don't give up.
Well, there should have been some blood on the water because Sharks have been able to get that first half with an 8-4. Now we transition over to the second half of map number one in the lower bracket. And right now, Red Cannons have had to use this few minutes to figure out what is going to be the game plan for this T side. A lot for Red Cannon to discuss. They managed to scrounge together four rounds at least. Gives them a fighting chance here, but this pistol becomes mandatory at the end of it all. The Sharks, meanwhile, Peachy Keen moving into their CT pistol. Pretty much full vests across the board. RDN with a Raid Boss Dual Beretta setup. I'm assuming DRG's got some utility drop for him as well. But we're just waiting to get that map started. And we'll be into the second half pistol just shortly. Yeah, just waiting to see what the... There might be just a bit of a tech issue or just kind of waiting things out for one of the players. Not too sure. But, you know, again, Paladin, I feel, you know, when we talked about this too before Red Cannons, I mean, again, their, their T side on the first series, you know, was a 7-5, not in their favor. But, you know, we got to flip, you know, things over on the T side, I mean, it was a whole different team. I mean, it just, it kind of felt like a Phoenix, you know, coming out and they just became a whole new monster because they were able to put up some, some big rounds and they were able to get that win that we talked about that we weren't too sure about. And here we go. It looks like we are getting things closer and closer, but it does kind of make me, you know, pull the obvious thing to state here, but I think the pistol is going to be critical here because this can just really, again, give that more solidification for them to feel good getting back into this game and moreover just having that momentum to to potentially rely on as well the second round pistol will go underway as destiny and nython have the utility at hand So the mid control are going to come through. So they're going to do the 4 1 split. Smoke now going to be thrown. That's going to block off things here. Camera still open. Doc does spot these players. So now has to run away for this. Going to reset his positioning. The blocks are getting aggressive. And that's going to be a head removed. But it's just back and forth. It's not in favor, really, for anybody except for Young Sharks because they've been able to put it through a 3v1. And they get it done with a pistol. And they shut down any sort of aggression. The door is closed. And Red Cannons are not invited. Yeah, no big investment, of course, on this one. Just the Deagle with the Tech-9 here for Red Candids. And it's going to be hard. Zal and Venom Zara are going to wait things out. Now they're posted up here in Canal. So doing a bit of sightseeing. And they might even potentially try to go into E-Box here. But this is kind of a scary take because, again, it, it's a bit of a funnel. So Togs does have to frag out. Oh, my goodness. No way does that happen again. Tech-9s open up the site. It's just, it's amazing to see because this is what we saw before where Red Cannons did almost a similar take. This Tech Nine's minimal investment. They just find that one two combo and they get around because the other team doesn't want to go for the rotate. They don't want to retake the scenario. 
and they pick up an M4, and they pick up a round that, again, on paper, should not have gone their way. And I was worried they were going into a bit of a tight corridor like that, but it didn't even matter at all because the Tech Knight's just going to do better. We were looking for that kind of impact from, from Hards Out. We spoke about him a lot in his time in the Open Qualifier, and now he steps up big 14-9, and nine, leading the way for Red Cannons. And they're going to need a lot more of that from the, the Pain Veteran. A lot of saved guns, saved by, by, by sharks. They've still got three MP9s. But look at the utility, man. They're down to one smoke out of a minute 30 seconds. And that already has me super concerned for the longevity of this CT side. Yeah, it is really worrisome because now they don't have a lot of utility to block anything off here for Red Candid. So they have to use that smoke wisely. Togs is the one player that does have a look at this. He's pushing B main. So he's getting a lot of information. So now the Sharks can actually push back a little bit. They have this intel that is probably a lean towards the A site. So now they can start to reposition themselves. Flash comes in here for the T side. A swing from RDN. He gets away with murder somehow. And this one goes back for more. And he's able to put this MP9. And it's a menace. So now Hard Zone. He's the one that put up the M4. He's going to swing with it. A big spray. Leaving it down to Togs by himself. Has armor, has that smoke, but does not have the kit. It is a 1v2, and he's going to go for this. He's putting a lot of good pressure down into A main, but can he get the timing right? It's so messy, but Red Cannons find a way. And as you say, Togs in that 1v2 doesn't have any way to upgrade. He doesn't have a kit on the back of him. And it looks like Red Cannons are quite aware that it's, it's going to be an A main lurk. And Red Cannons, man, they found a way to get themselves their sixth as well. They shut down the Force Buy, and they're right back into winning ways. And as you said, when they played 9Z, they looked like a completely different team when they switched over to that T side. And I'm starting to think it's the same situation here on Anubis. It just felt like on their CT side, they weren't able to, you know pick up the same rounds like they were with the 9z game and obviously this game we got to see but when they kind of go on this t side i don't know what it is they see red and they just frag out because right now they're making this closer and closer three round differential sharks now in a tight money situation where they're they're gonna have to just save this i mean togs does have the mp9 they got a you know a pair of duallys that's the only investment that we've seen in this round and i mean this is asking a lot right now Nifong finally gets that off to work a little bit. Now they're just going to put a bit more aggression on this and they clean house, man. They might just do a speed run round here and get themselves that seven quickly. Togs will get himself an upgrade. Uh, gets himself an A4. But they know where his position is. They're going to try to duel him and he gets another parting gift, but Nithon's there for the trade. Double for him. Red Cannons get themselves their seventh and the guns come back out for the Sharks. Kofolo will get his AWP and we need to start seeing the Sharks pull back together because what a blow it was to lose that second round on the half. How do they respond in kind immediately? Well, this is going to be the big moment here. This can be a telling round because if we do see that, you know, go into the favor for the T side, this can make it a little bit more shaking in the boots here for the Sharks. And we might be seeing one of those timeouts that we haven't been able to see for at all, actually, in this game. So the op's going to be missed here from Gafolo. So it was to lose that second round of the half. How do they respond in kind immediately? Well, this is going to be the big moment here. This can be a telling round because if we do see that, you know, go into the favor for the T side, this can make it a little bit more shaking in the boots here for the Sharks. And we might be seeing one of those timeouts that we haven't been able to see for at all, actually, in this game. So the op's going to be missed here from Gafolo. So he's going to get pushed back right away. Look at this. So now Red Cannons actually do have some good real estate early on. And we're talking a minute and 30 in this round. So settles and Red Cannons are very willing to give away a lot of this map control. Sit on their laurels. Maybe try to punish some, some mid-round aggression. But Young Sharks are not really involved in any sort of semantics in the early round. They've kind of parked Nithon with a deep line in middle. And the rest of these members pretty much outside of that B bomb site, waiting to pounce. 
And as they continue to stall, Gafolo is thinking about moving into the middle of the map. Mm -hmm. And with that, a potential punishment on the cards if, if red cannons want to explode here. Yeah, and this is a good split that we're seeing right now for red cannons because they're going to have these players in E-Box. That Molly actually does miss. The Doc's still in the corner. Now he's going to swing out. Those cogs might fall these. So now, Davidius is going to be able to find that one. And some good trades coming back here for Red Cannon. So now, it is just going to get the bomb down. The Ops still in the play from Gafolo. But all of a sudden, the bomb actually gets denied. So 15 seconds remain. Venom Zera has to frag out now. He doesn't have time for a bomb plant. But it's going to be a 10th round game. Sharks, they hold on. What a bite there in terms of the read from Sharks. Four players to actually answer back two red cannons hit. I'm surprised they bit down that hard that easily. I think red cannons were expecting a little bit easier of a time. And as soon as Nython goes down, it feels like the round unravels and, and the prediction is that much easier. Red cannons are going to have to do a little bit better if they want to feign to mid presence and if they want to execute onto that B bomb site. With that, the purchase is not very pretty as that bomb wasn't able to go down. They've got two smokes and a Molotov here, Laz, to potentially get themselves into round number 18. Yeah, and, and with this lack of utility, I was kind of thinking they might want to, you know, put a little bit more on the gas pedal, be a little bit more aggressive to see what they can get away with in terms of taking down some of these guys. Doing, but I, was, I, was that out, but. I think he's trying to feign some some drop nades or yeah, maybe probably. even a drop bomb or something like that. But yeah, like nobody's that, yeah. biting. Nobody's yeah, nobody's biting. biting. No, not at all. And I mean, this is okay. So red cannons are going back to the setup where they want to split on this B site. They're going to put the triple into E box, two in the A main. But it is only one player, so Togs is by himself. A good molly. That timing could have saved his life here because now. He's kind of holding them back just a bit longer. He gets that information. At least one player's in B main. Now his teammates are starting to come from the big flank here. You can see that Doc. If they can get this timing right, they might find it. Hardstyle looks like he's clearing it, and he is. So now they have to go. They can't wait any longer. Togs is able to find two. Making it back to a three on three. 30 seconds remain, Paladin. That bomb, it needs to get down, and it needs to be quick. And Nightbomb, what is he doing? He is fighting this still. And he had the bomb, no less. 20 seconds left on the clock. And Sharks, they don't even want to be involved with this duel. I honestly don't know what Nython is doing right now. There is 10 seconds left on the clock, and he's got to get the bomb down. He finally does. But man, oh man, was that such a risk to peak E-Box like that. Should he go down, there is no other player to potentially retrieve that bomb and plant it. But by the skin of their teeth, the T's get it done. They secure themselves in eighth. And the sharks have to fight on for a little bit longer. Well, that's that confidence we wanted, right? We wanted Nython to, you know, do some crazy things, but it's a little bit more for me. But uh, at least this save from the sharks can be good because it would be the op and an AK that is going to be saved as well as the kit and armor. So, but it's a matter if they can hold on to this. They should be fine. But red cannons have now made this very interesting game as they're making a climb back into this with a two round differential and i mean let's not forget this was an 8-4 first half that wasn't favor for sharks so and we haven't seen a timeout yet i i still think sharks are feeling okay with this but if they lose this round i mean surely we're gonna see it i mean it's crazy that we haven't seen any timeouts being used there finally something being called by sharks because Look, even if even if you don't have anything to talk about, just taking a breather, relaxing, resetting the situation can do a, a number on the team's environment. And I think that both Red Cannons probably needed it at some point on their CT side, and now Sharks definitely need one here on their defense. So good timeout to be called. And we're right back into the action as Sharks really need to find an answer to this issue where... They aren't able to really get involved when these sight hits are coming in. That's just the difficulty of Anubis when sight hits come at you. It's just hard to multi-frag. And if you can't multi-frag, the round's just straight up over. A very big round here for round number 19. Back to a 2-1-2 here for the Sharks setup. 
having the double player at A. Whereas before we saw a lot of setups, you know, just kind of having that one player anchoring it. Gafolo now going to play a little bit more passive towards mid, giving it up actually. So just kind of playing for the camera. And Red Cannons again, putting in more of that lean. We saw that before. They really liked the A site. I'm going to go back to their ways. Why not? We've seen the potency of those A set pieces. They look very, very dangerous when they're given enough room, when they have that A main control. But RDN is, is very keen on at least dueling for it early. If he can get that first kill and fall back, their life becomes very easy to hold on to this part of the map. Nade comes in, and I think the timing is fantastic. There's that first kill that RDN was needing. Now it's got to be the rest of the numbers to step up. Kofolo gets his, and now Doc has got to find some as well. But Arto and Nython, what trades from them? Kofolo can't answer in any way. Kofolo oh, no. can actually bounce through. He goes through, he hits the no-scope as well. The bomb gets dropped and into the 2v2, but TRG only has an a 5-7. No oh matter, still gets the frag, and it's Nython in the 2v1. How does he come through with this? I mean, we had a huge clutch with him previously on the A side, but he's got to switch the Glock, and it's too many targets. Gofolo shuts it down, but what a Herculean effort there. How does he pull that off? I have no idea there, Laz. Man, the cojones to do that, to go on top A like that, drop down, and take down the Bomb Planter, and then keep fighting. Like, I mean, he was in that position, he went right in the pit, and he just wanted to go for a brawl, and he did it. I mean, he put that round into his own hands, and he was able to get the triple to get them that 11, and again, Red Cannons looked really good. They were able to get that, you know, potential plant position with the, you know, just maintaining the site, but with Gafolo, he had that small bit of an opening, he went for the biscuit. And it was risky, but it was worth it. And that might have just confirmed their map right off the rip. Look at the economy now, snapped for the red cannons because of the lack of a plant there. AK on, on Nython, and it's got to lead the way, but there's Destiny with his Galil. He chimes in, oh, but the no. lineup for Doc was nearly everything. So much damage being done, and maybe that nade gets the job done. Tog finishes the job on the Destiny. They're just gonna swarm this camera smoke. David can do nothing, and it's a map point for Sharks. So ruthless, and I mean, I mean the, the composure that we're seeing here from Sharks to bounce back when I was getting a little bit worried for them in the sake that, you know, they were losing control of the second half, but now we're gonna see Red Candidates again back on the Tex, and a Deagle with it. But not a position you want to be in here where you're you're fighting to stay in this first map. I mean, this is the, the map point here for Sharks. And if they do succeed with this, we are going to be moving over to Mirage, which will be the first time we've seen both these teams play on it today on the stream. So we'll have to see what Red Cannons have in store for us. I mean, they've done some some crazy things, but it's already looking like it might be uh, might be wow. almost a blip. And Gapolo able to find two. Oh, and this is just taking over this map, man. He just oh, found man. a way to, to lock in. DRG is there as well. Doc to chime in for the last few frags. And 13-8 Sharks surprise on their map one victory. Finally changing up the veto, and it does them dividends. I mean, they look like a team possessed as soon as Gafolo was able to get that incredible Herculean shot through his own...